everybody too watching on YouTube that you want to support us on Patreon because YouTube is trying to obviously censor everything and anything it does not agree with. Even even if you agree with YouTube, just simply talking about a situation that YouTube may not agree with uh, will land you in trouble, as you guys know from my Tide Pod song. So make sure to support us on my Patreon account, which is in the description box down below, or provide us with uh, direct donations, um, which is also in a link down below at joecronenshow.net. You can find that link. Ugh. I'm done. Yeah, just uh, you seeing obviously everything under attack, uh, free speech under attack, uh, criticism under attack, and I know that you know YouTube doesn't have to do that. But when you know pretty much everybody goes to YouTube, you know where, where does everybody go to watch videos to get their uh, alternatives uh, media uh, to hear what people's thoughts are? They turn to YouTube, right? Everybody does. So, but YouTube is censoring things they don't like. Obviously, right here on Corrupted's YouTube channel, we can't go live until April. We're not able to go live until April here on Corrupted because we got a strike a while back from YouTube because I made a Tide Pod video, a Tide Pod parody song. So we got shut down just for making a song. And it's uh, pathetic. Pathetic. Really, when you look at it, it's, it's pathetic. That, that's what it is. Uh, many of our friends have been shut down for simple, simply questioning things, for um, for just asking questions about stuff, for stuff that, you know, and a lot of the stuff I didn't even agree with, but just for questioning things, just for asking a question. You know, they've gotten taken down. It used to be six months. Now it's three months. But still, it's still a big situation, still a big hassle, a big pain in the ass. And really, because YouTube doesn't adequately look at things, they just take you down and that's it. And they're the ones that, you know, that they're the ones that triggered the thing themselves. That's that's the thing. But they don't care to follow it up. So they, they released this email that I read the other day, if you remember, that was like, oh, you know. With you know, ninety nine percent of you are good. Yeah, okay. I would I would say that this um, stuff like this usually affects about uh, almost all the community. You know what I mean? So YouTube releases this letter like, oh, you know, we know that not all of you are bad, and sorry that sometimes you know these other channels are censored. But it's the bad ones, and we're doing it to protect you guys. But uh, I don't believe that because you're literally doing it to almost everybody because I'm thinking about my friends that I know on YouTube, right? That I've, everybody I've ever known on YouTube. And I, and I go through my friends and it's happened to all of them. You know, just, just look at the wrestling community alone. Every single person I know has been affected by some kind of bogus thing or the algorithm searching for things. So clearly the algorithm was searching anything that says Tide Pod, you know, take it down. And then you say, well, okay, yeah, I, I, my title did say Tide Pod, but it was because I was talking about the Tide Pods. Because that was a big news story that everybody's talking about. So I made a video talking about the Tide Pods. And they take your video down and they claim that it's bullying. Which is bullshit. So... Uh, then you appeal it to YouTube, and then a YouTube says, no, nope, nope, you broke the rules. You broke the rules by talking about something, by discussing things. But, you know, YouTube, uh, YouTube is um, run by, oh, I believe, a woman now that, that is very similar to the Disney woman, you know, the what's-her-face where it's basically about making sure everybody's okay and it's a safe place and stuff like that. So you're going to get more of this. When you have people paranoid about thought, paranoid about uh, commentary, you get people who want to ban books or b burn books or ban videos and things like that. And this is the new version of that. Because the biggest outreach you can have socially on any platforms are... You know, Facebook, YouTube, Twitter. And then after that, maybe you got Instagram or something. Uh, but after that, that's it. You know, a daily motion, there's nothing that goes on over there. 
If you put up a video on Daily Motion that's like a popular title, you might get three views. L legitimately, you might get three views. You might get zero. So there's really no way to garner an audience on Daily Motion. It's just a site to put up videos and you can add you can put ads on them, but it's really unless you already have an audience, they, nobody's going to find you on there. So the place to be discovered is either on Twitter or on YouTube. Those are the two places you can be discovered. Pretty much everywhere else, you really can't be discovered. I mean, I suppose you can be discovered on Twitch, but it's more of a it's a much smaller audience again on Twitch to be discovered. It would take a much longer time to build up an audience over there. So discoverability is is so low everywhere. You know, Twitch is the old school method of if you have a lot of viewers, you can be discovered. But you know something? To be honest, Twitch is even more harsh than YouTube. So if you're anybody who likes to spout off their free thoughts or, you know, be edgy or, you know, you do some things that maybe some people wouldn't agree with, uh, you're going to be censored. It's not going to go well for you on Twitch. And now it's not going to go, it might not go well for you on YouTube either, just like us on Corrupted. Our, our channel has been, you know, just completely demoralized by YouTube, but we still keep going forward. I still keep pushing forward on it. And, you know, that's why all these episodes are stored on Soundwave. So if, if something happens to the YouTube individual, un, unlisted, by the way, videos, unlisted videos on YouTube, uh, you know, of course, I can re-upload them to a different video site, a private video site where you guys can still get access here on Patreon. But guess what? Even Patreon has had problems with this type of stuff where they have not allowed people to be creators on here. So you are really forced to go only to hosting your own website which uh, that could be a problem coming forward in the future now too because net neutrality has gone so what if they throttle your website what if they throttle what you do on your website and then still you know you might get a lot of your audience to go over to your website but how do you get new audience to go to your website you know it really people forget like before YouTube and this is the whole point this is my point here. Before YouTube, you could have a website. You could have a live radio show on, on your website. You could have a live video program on your website. You know, we've been doing it for years on the internet. This shit ain't new. But nobody really had a giant following that I'm aware of in that manner of respects unless you had a platform to advertise it. Like, who's going to find CorruptedPodcasts.com? You know what I mean? Or Joe Cronin Show, um, dot com or dot net. You know, who's going to find my website? Nobody's going to find it. Because why would you be looking for it? You wouldn't even know. You're on YouTube looking through YouTube shows. And that's what you're doing. So, the only way to set that up is, is to still be on YouTube to advertise your show through YouTube, but then you still have to build your audience there and it just becomes this circle of a runaround crap hole. So, you know, it, it really becomes very important what YouTube has done. you like, that's what people have to understand. Think about this. Before YouTube, I was going live from Stickham, which is, which was a cam website. And I used the algorithm basically that when somebody had more than 20 viewers, they would be put probably on the main page because more than 20 viewers was a lot on Stickham. So I would um, open up my web browser and on Stickham, what you could do is you can't do this on YouTube anymore. Somebody actually funny, they sent me a message the other day like, keep botting on your channel and double clicking on your own videos to get views or something like that. Well, you can't do that on YouTube anymore because if you do that, uh, the algorithm knows and it cuts your views in half. Like it cuts them down to what they're supposed to be. Like it knows when you did did that. So it doesn't matter. It's, you can click on a video all day and it's going to know that you manipulated the view count. You know, it's going to see that some so-and-so at what IP address clicked on this video 1,000 times. So they're going to eliminate 999 of those clicks. It's very easy for the algorithm to do that. So... But on Stickam, you know, it was a site that didn't really have any idea about that. So it, what I would do is I would open up like several windows, create viewers, and then people would start coming in naturally. And then more people would come in and then it would be a trickle down effect. 
and it would push me to the number one spot. And I remember me and Troy used to do a show. We do the Rage Internet radio show, and you know we go from like twenty people watching to, you know, like two hundred people or something. And um, it seemed pretty goddamn amazing. We got we were able to manipulate the system to get new people in all the time, and uh, we would go live uh, on Stickam, and it seemed like a pretty good platform. But you know it was free. We just did it to do it for fun, and that was really it. But right around then, around 2011, 2012, YouTube really didn't have that. It had Google Hangouts and stuff like that, but there really wasn't a way to uh, trend with it. It wasn't until YouTube Live came out that, you know, you could be live on YouTube and it was searchable on YouTube. Like it was, you know, if someone's searching for WrestleMania post show, like they would find me because it was live everywhere. It wasn't just a private hangout or even a public hangout. It was a searchable live video. And that is when things changed. Because there was no other websites like that ever before that. There was no way to trend. Right like right now, if if, if there's a famous golf golfer that retires, I can go live and I can talk about it. And it's searchable. And hundreds of people who care about this golfer might come in to my live video and see me for the first time and be interested in what I'm doing. Uh, there was never that before. There's really no other website like that before. It also, it can trend on Google because Google owns YouTube and it's in that algorithm. So, if I make up a fictional golf character, say Bill Dildo Jones is a golfer and he retires, you know, I make I make a video and I go live and I start doing a podcast about how I love Dildo Jones. You know, well. I can be found on YouTube by hundreds of people instantly. But if I make that same video or go live from all these other different platforms or any other website, chances are nobody gives a shit. Doesn't trend anywhere. Nobody finds it. Nobody even knows that I'm doing that show. I mean, I guess the only other place I suppose is Facebook Live. But Facebook Live is a little bit different because that relies on all these people finding your video, uh, people sharing your video and or you advertising your video so you can get some eyes on you can manipulate a little bit and get your get eyes on you on Facebook a little bit but it does rely on people sharing it or you advertising what you're doing and that requires money so there is no other place that's like YouTube and that's why it's so important and that's why people say, oh, just leave YouTube or just do something else. Well, no, you always have to have a presence on YouTube. But look at what I'm doing right here with you guys. Nobody else is hearing this podcast right now. Only my patrons are hearing this podcast. Uh, unless I make this episode free, which is every once in a while I make an episode free. And you might hear it on Corrupted uh, Podcast YouTube channel. And today may be an important, it may be an important transmission for you guys. Go Alex Jones on everybody. Uh, but no, so it may be... Uh, it may, this may be an episode I do upload uh, to youtube.com slash corrupted podcast and right here on Patreon. This is might be one of my free episodes that I do, but I don't know if it will be because I've only done about five free episodes out of what is this episode 68 or something. So, but the point is you have to use YouTube eventually to create your own off platform membership base or Patreon or, you know, something like that because it's not going to be there forever. At any any point, things can happen with it. It can go away so easily. And yes, this is episode number 68 of uh, Morning Madness. But yes, uh, the the attack on... Uh, on I just have so many messages from people that I know, um, big, big bigger YouTubers than me, people who are around my uh, size. And... It's not even about it's not about whether you agree with things or your left side or your right side or whatever you agree politically and stuff. It's about you can't even talk about it. Even even if you agree with it, if you talk about it, you could be in trouble. So you could be in trouble if you agree with it, you could be in trouble if you don't agree with it, you could be in trouble if you just don't even care and you mention it. Um, and that's ridiculous that they don't actually look at the context that's in your video. Man, Ro Rose McGowan is just nuts, right? Um, 
people really think that that Bernie Sanders is going to run again. <clears throat> people think that Bernie Sanders is going to run for president in 2020 again. Which again, like my only problem, my only problem with Bernie Sanders was um, was that he uh, that he didn't. I wish he just came out and was like, I'm not supporting Hillary. Go fuck yourself. I'm not reporting Hillary. I'm not supporting Hillary. If he had done that, I'd been like, damn, this guy's sick. I like this. You know, but instead he endorsed her. And that's kind of what made me a little sour on him. But I, I, I get it. It's like an honorable thing because he said he would. So I, 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 it also paints him kind of as a face, you know. Uh, but Bernie Sanders fulfilled a pledge he made during his 2016 presidential campaign. He returned to the city of Flint, Michigan on February 25th during his uh, visit to the city. Uh, which he had not previously been reported. Sanders met with local community members and activists who are dealing with the lead poisoning uh, crisis that has affected the city's water supply since 2014. That is just so unacceptable. Flint, Michigan's lead poisoning crisis, that, that is unacceptable that we have that, that, we're, that they're dealing with that. We are... In America, I mean, we're so we we have money, like we have the money, okay. We also have a giant debt, but I mean, they can fix this. Come on, lead in the water. In a statement to Yahoo News, Sanders said the situation remains dire and the government response has been inadequate. On my return to Flint this week, I once again saw a community uh, that is economically and socially oppressed and desp- desperate need of our help. I also saw some beautiful, strong people of all ages working tirelessly to improve the community. Um, The impact of the water crisis continues to be enormous, and the government at all levels is not doing enough. The work, like, but, you know, what's, what, what, what what haven't they done? Have they not fixed the water issue? How, how have you not, how has that not been solved yet? The pipes are still not uh, the pipes have still not been fixed in certain areas. A small number of pipes have been fixed. The money has not been accounted for properly. Well, <laughs> that's stupid, but that's a different situation. Flint's water quality continues to improve. However, Flint's residents are still advised to use filtered or bottled water for drinking, cooking, and brushing teeth. That's crazy. Since 2014, is that real? Did they find they found this about this 2014? They're still drinking water bottles. They still can't get water. Jesus. There's a comment from a from a user from a viewer. Flint is like a lot of poor big cities. The powerful thinks it takes a lot to make a difference, but it doesn't. You have celebrities having clothes, uh, clothing lines made overseas for major profits and could bring those same jobs here to the U.S. Yeah, they won't. They won't do it. They, they See, that's the thing is you can't make anybody put their clothing line in the U.S., but that's why when all these celebrities and these rich people talk, it's just kind of like, eh, go fuck yourself because these people don't care. None of these people care about you or care about any of this crap. They just, uh, they want to make their money. You know, they want, that's all they care about is money. They want to, they, they feel so bad that they make a ton of money and that they do something that's not even, not illegal, but they don't really do anything to help society. So that's why they grab one of these like social sort of, um, uh, SJW movements or whatever movement and they just come out and they start being really outspoken like we have to help and blah blah but meanwhile they're like really a kind of a scumbag you know but they do that sort of to ease their conscience about what they do because they know that it's fucked up so this website shows aging celebrities who are hardly recognizable and it's funny because the photo is definitely Axl Rose I saw this recently I saw um, I saw like Guns N' Roses live like it's a multi-cam professional shot thing. Guns N' Roses live from something amphitheater in 2016 or 17 or some shit like that. And I was just like, God damn it, man. Axl Rose looks like he's fatter than me. You know, like where, where you're, where you're like, you look like you, you don't look giant, like a big fat guy, but like he looks fucked like his belly's giant. You know, his face is all puffed out. 
everything. He just looks like a like a goofy dad up on stage trying to sing Guns N' Roses songs. It's really weird. Really bizarre. If you want to feel awkward, go ahead and watch that shit. It is weird. Um, but I'm the same way. And, you know, uh, Kevin Smith just had that heart attack the other day, and the doctors were saying, like, oh, you know, any guys with a belly, you know, a big belly, or if you're starting to get a big belly or whatever, that's an indication, like, you know, you could be having, you know, down for a heart attack at some point. So, you know, I I'm taking that to to heart too because I'm st I've started to get that so like I'm like oh you know maybe I should like it's not even it's not that bad but it's going there you know I need to work out you know basically what I've been doing um I, you know quitting quitting playing hockey because of my concussions and also the fact that my hockey night was Friday night and now I do monetize this the, the big reason why I've never gone back to hockey even a couple times is really because monetize this because I'm like well I'm not going to go skip monetize this my my income uh in our big show to go play hockey anymore i would love to though there 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 have been times where i just i'm devastated that i can't go play hockey but you know with not not doing that for the last two years now it's been two and a half years or or, or so of not doing that and then also with losing my job in february last year which is now jesus it was a year ago that i lost my job i can't even believe that it's been a year now like I, I just actually just just thought just hit me just now. It's been just over a year now. It's unbelievable. And um, ever since all that, you know, getting up at home, taking care of kids, sometimes going back to sleep. You know, Leah takes care of a lot of stuff. But you know, working on my computers, I don't really exercise at all. In the last year, I really haven't exercised at all. You know, even at work, we had a we had a gym at my work that you know during I would work out like 20 minutes at least every other day or so and um I haven't been doing that at all because I've been at home so I'm definitely in the worst shape of my life right now there's no doubt about it I gotta just start doing something run around the block you know something so I mean I do run down when I pick my kid up from school I run down or whatever I run back but that's just nothing you know that's not even anything really it gets the heart going a little bit but so I just thought about that. I'm like, damn, I really got to start working out and stuff. And, you know, with Jake DeMarco going in for that surgery on the stomach, you know, which is going to shorten the stomach, I think, and everything, he's going to go through that surgery to help him lose weight. Uh, that's, you know, I would never, I don't think I would, I, it would be, it is a last resort type surgery. I think he definitely qualifies for it, though. Um, I was watching Boogie go through that, and I was like, man, I don't know how you go through that. Boogie's like a big YouTuber, if you don't know, you probably do, but big YouTuber, big, he was a big giant guy and he looks so different now after having the surgery and his wife left him, man. I, you know, I just, that even blows my mind. It's like this girl's always with him. He's always talking about her for years and now they're broken up and it's kind of crazy. Never thought, you know, that, I mean, lots of people said that was going to happen and I didn't, I didn't think it would. Um, science news, our nearest exoplanet neighbor and any living, uh, our nearest exoplanet neighbor and any life living there just got blasted by radiation from its star. So this is a wild picture. And I and I don't know, I think this is an illustration, I, I want to say. But basically, I think what it's showing is a, uh, a, a giant um, explosion or a friggin' a giant, one of these just, like, what the hell is it? Solar flare, just this solar explosion or solar flare, or just giant, big, massive explosion that, that ends up puncturing out of the sun and all over the planet. So our nearest exoplanet neighbor got um, blasted from radiation from its own sun. It says Proxima, uh, Proxima B resides within the habitable zone of a star. Proxima Centauri, astronomers and alien hunters have long looked to be the nearby system as our best chance of discovering extraterrestrial life, given that it's less than five light years away from our own. Scientists have noted the planet could be Earth-like, which is incredibly exciting if you dream of one day reading news about E.T., but this recent stellar event could put a serious damper on that enthusiasm. So they, they believe that its sun is... 10 times brighter than the largest flares 
of our um, of our own sun. It's like Proxima B was blasted by a high energy radiation uh, during this flare. Or it says it's all likely. But yeah, absolutely. Well, so the sun just pfft, just threw up. The sun just threw up on the planet next to it. Basically, it'd be like if our sun just fucking threw up on us. Just pfft. and and you know, I don't think we're capable of seeing that a tiny solar flare could come from our sun hit our planet and fuck us up pretty good, right? But this is no bones about it. There's no like this isn't a tiny solar flare coming from the sun. This this so this is like the fucking sun like I said threw up on the planet. So yeah, radiation and everything just it must be nuts. <laughs> and it's there's all these articles about hey, maybe it's not a good place to live anymore uh because of the radiation that's probably all over this planet and whatever happened uh, else with the sun. Um, there is a correction that's funny the articles are all wrong and then you gotta go to the website but someone says the, the flare occurred four years ago not in March uh, it wasn't seen until March because it took over four years for the light to reach us so yeah it did happen a while back but I don't think that's really I think we get that and um, you know just other people saying they don't even know if this, this planet has an atmosphere let alone other life and that's true I mean, there could bacteria and stuff like that. I mean, that's the thing that, that when when you say life, like that's kind of what I think of. Like, other my, my, like just tiny micro bacterial organisms and stuff. Organisms maybe we don't even know about. You know, um, you know, it'd be great is to find life on another planet, but like it like it's powered by something completely fucking different. You know, that would be weird. You know, like it's breathing. Like, wow, this thing is breathing in not air, but it's breathing in like some kind of ion or fucking metals that we don't even know about or something in the some gas in the air that um you know, some gas that we would never even be able to breathe in you know what I mean that, that's in the that's in the atmosphere that would be wild to find some shit like that oh this thing's breathing in krypton you know or <laughs> or argon you know there's argon gas here for some reason um you know that type of shit which would be pretty terrifying to breathe that in, I feel like. <laughs> uh, doctor allegedly guns down neighbors in front of, uh, of their kids. A family doctor in Texas allegedly gunned down a couple of neighbors who were helping his mother move furniture. What? New York Post? This is fucking bizarre. This is really bizarre. Someone said, I guess we need armed guards on driveways next. We might need armed guards on driveways, guys. I don't know what's going on outside, but it's causing my whole fucking desk to shake. <laughs> a family doctor in Texas allegedly gunned down a couple of neighbors who were helping his mother move furniture. Wait, they were helping his mother and he gunned them down? Robert Edward something, the second. I hate people with douchebag seconds and thirds. A family practice physician and Sagan is accused of using a rifle to fatally shoot Tiffany and lean straight. There were 30. Oh no. Okay. That's her. And then the husband is Anthony Ray straight. Uh, as they were helping his mother move furniture, investigators were still puzzled over what sparked the shooting, which occurred in front of the streets. Three sons. Oh my God. The oldest of whom is 10 years old. Jesus, just shoot me now. At this time, there are no indications there was a feud, disturbance, or anything. Like, what the fuck? Um, Anthony Strait was pronounced dead at the scene. His wife was taken to a nearby hospital where she was later pronounced dead. Law enforcement sources said the 56-year-old suddenly turned on the couple, shot them with a rifle in front of their kids for no apparent reason. Investigators believe the Straits had been helping his mother. In cases like this where we don't understand the why or what goes into our communities, well, I just feel bad for these kids. He didn't shoot the kids, though. I heard this voice, and then I heard two more shots, and the voice stopped. People would characterize them as the nicest people. Like, what is going on? I mean, I just can't believe these three little kids have no parents. 
because they were helping somebody move in the house? I, I can't even believe it. I, I read this story like, like, what the hell is going on, bro? Is this another demented dude with a gun? The, the thing is, like, this will just go... Like, well, they won't chalk this up and try to figure out, like, what happened here. You know, I feel like nobody nobody cares about this. But, see, to me, like, this, this goes into the category of the Florida shooting. Like, what's up with this guy's mentality? What's up with this guy mentally? And he's got a shotgun... But, you know, shotgun's one of those things that, you know, you, you would use to protect your home anyway. But, you know, he could have come out there with a knife. He could have come out there with a butcher knife and started hacking people up, too. You know, from behind, you know, stab in the back of the head, stab the girl in the back of the head. Then, I mean, it could have been just as, you know, just as bad there. It's weird that he killed them. He didn't kill the kids, which is good, even though the kids watched. But why did he kill the parents again? Like, maybe, what? like, just what? I expected to see something, like, argument, like, I don't know, the guy tried to hook up with his mother or something, you know? But there's nothing. This fucking guy with a nose tattoo, it's his most horrible tattoos, and I see there's one on some girl's, like, private parts. And then there's another one with, like, one of the Ninja Turtles on someone's nose. That keeps coming up all over the place. Imagine getting a Ninja Turtle, like, on your nose. I forget what the video game is that's out right now, but it has, like, the Ninja Turtles on it. It's, like, fucking awesome. And it's, like, that's what the Ninja Turtles look like, not those Michael Bay fucking monsters. Michael Bay made the Ninja Turtles look like psychotic monsters. Just bizarre. But these things look... But the Turtles look awesome on this video game. I think it's the Batman game. Is it Injustice or something? I don't I don't even know. But it looks... That looks like the Turtles. You know, whereas those Michael Bay Ninja Turtles just look dumb as hell. Like, they really... All my childhood is ruined. Almost anything, every everything needs to be rebooted and everything is terrible. Uh, Transformers, to me, has been ruined. But nothing has been ruined more than Ghostbusters and Ninja Turtles. Two franchises I just loved have become shit. Ghostbusters, Ninja Turtles, ruined. Everything is ruined. And every everything I grew up watching, I'm just please... I'm, I beg them to please. I, I heard earlier that there might be something going on with Fresh Prince of Bel Air. Please do not remake Fresh Prince of Bel Air. Please do not remake uh, Back to the Future. Do not touch Back to the Future. Do not touch Fresh Prince of Bel Air. And, and you know, I used to be somebody who didn't even like people that said that. You know, the people that always say, "Don't do it. Don't touch it. Leave it alone." I used to be like, "No, man, let's do it. Come on, you know, whatever." Um, but now I'm finally in agreement. Don't touch anything. Just leave it alone because. I don't want to gamble anymore. I, I, you know, I don't want to get excited. To, oh, they're doing Back to the Future. That's cool, I guess. No, it's not cool. It, it, they'll fucking, they'll fuck it up. They'll ruin it. They'll make it stupid. This, this generation will, will be like, oh yeah, I've heard about this, I guess, this movie and these things, but uh, whatever. But now I'm gonna go out and see it, and then, all of a sudden, it's fucking. They'll be like, oh, that was pretty good, you know, pretty good action movie. Okay, whatever. And those kids in the new generation will chalk it up to like a seven out of ten movie um, that they'd probably get on Blu-ray, but they're not that. You no, know, they're not crazy about it. They're just like, oh, that's pretty cool, and a seven out of ten. Uh, yeah, cool. All right, let's go over Corey's house and bang Corey's mom. Okay, huh? But but like to all of us, we're like who like love Back to the Future or love Ghostbusters or love something that we grew up with that was like when we were a kid, it wasn't a 7 out of 10 movie. It was like everything. It was like a 9 out of 10 and it was like epic. It was like holy shit. You know, you bought posters, you bought the it was just nuts. So to take that franchise and like dumb it down, it feels just like wrestling, how the wrestlers are kind of dumbed down. Everything is just sort of slightly not as fun as it used to be. And that's what I feel like they'll do. That's what they've been doing with everything else. That's the way everything else has gone. So I don't want things to go that way. And I'm afraid they will. Guys, this is Morning Madness episode number 68. If you want to listen to all 68 episodes, right here on patreon.com slash Joe Cronin Show. Uh, this is where you can hear all 68 episodes of Morning Madness. So if you heard this episode as a sample, um, definitely uh, got to become a $5 patron, uh, uh, Joe Cronin Show, here on uh, patreon.com slash Joe Cronin Show. And go back and listen to all 68 episodes. Download them all. They're all in audio format, so you can download all 68 episodes. Go back and listen to all 68, whatever you got to do. And uh, have a good day. Guys, I'll talk to you later. Um, I've got some other stuff i got to work on right now, too. So that's it. What do you guys think? Leave in the comment down below. 
uh, let me know about some things that you maybe agreed with me with or you disagreed with or you have opinions on something, let me know. I'll try to talk about those things tomorrow on tomorrow's episode if you guys have them. Support us by listening to full episodes of Morning Madness on Patreon.com slash Joe Cronin Show. Obviously, YouTube uh, has already taken us down from going live here on Corrupted because they can't deal with opinions or even commentary uh, because that is how scared YouTube is of all of us. So make sure you support us that way or by going to JoeCroninShow.net. This is Corrupted. On YouTube, hit the sub button down below for more daily content.